Well, Reimagine Cavan was, as you know, uh, it was a project that Cavan County Council started with an architect's residency, um, Orla Murphy and Dermot McCabe, and they were the two architects who came in and who I did a project around Calvin identifying the number of alleyways and passageways in the town. One of the, one of the ideas behind Calvin Reimagined was besides the fact of just having the architects in, mm -hmm. it was also trying to open up that Calvin may be undergoing in the future changes mm -hmm. and development. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to try and engage the public with thinking about possibilities mm -hmm. of how you could imagine the spaces. Yeah. And one of the important things as well was that Calvin doesn't have a designated, say, arts, uh, does it designated um, Sem art, art centre. Art centre. Yeah, right. So one of the ideas with it was how public spaces can be used as a kind of a living art happening that doesn't need to be within the confines of a building as such. So I went up on spec first when I was asked would I be interested and I looked around some of the laneways and then I selected one. But really it kind of boiled down to with a lot of public art projects that the lane I got was the one that you could get permission to get. Right. And so that was, I think, quite tricky, just getting permission, because it was a laneway that led out to a narrow back way to offices and to a pub. Okay. So in one way you have things like security problems and you're worrying about access and things like that. So I got the laneway and I decided that I would try and create a kind of a little micro environment and I'd try and make a garden out of out of the laneway. So I had I grassed, I put artificial grass in it and I made a little forest of put real trees in and then I had a sound piece as well that the sound would come out mm -hmm. to try and attract people that yeah. if they walked in they were in a different kind of strange space. Well, it was kind of, I suppose in a way, uh, because I was invited in, as I say, to the project when it was fairly well established. And in a way, I suppose, the architects responded to the laneways, and I suppose I was asked to respond to Cavan Reimagined itself. So, because it was about laneways and alleyways, I decided that, given the time and everything, I would respond to that. So I think in ways, yes, that, that was really the kind of brief yeah. of responding to what the architects had done. So I decided that because my work, a lot of it is out there in the public sphere, that I thought I'd use the space like that. Well, there was, um, well, it, 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 there was a kind of a loose budget, yeah. and then it was a case of how to try and kind of work your way around that yeah but um, I suppose it's the difference between I had just finished um, a commission or I was in the middle of a, a public art commission a where a, a percent for our commission yeah. so I suppose the difference is that in a percent for our commission there's very clear guidelines yeah. and are very clear lines about what there is and what there isn't yeah. um, one of the, the, the things I suppose that, that worked, that, that was very useful for me in a situation like this was it was the first time I'd really used sound to the same extent. Yeah. And the sound and the um, installing of sound was, was, was done. I didn't have to worry about that. Someone was organised. So there was a certain amount of hands-on help and backup, yeah. which was great. Yeah. So the sound, that happened. Um, it was a slightly different situation maybe compared to others where there was materials uh, where, where like the grass was organised, well, I organised it but it was taken care of by the county council. Things like that which, which um, work very well. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think one of the things that the kind of work that I do where I'm working in sites, whether they're private places that are becoming public, I think even that is always a big problem. And I've noticed with my other work where, like, say, the Grey House getting a, a private 
house and turn it into something public or even things like putting things on the beach. In a situation like the alleyways, they were, it was actually private property. So the very beginning things like for Rhonda and for myself, I suppose, was getting permission and an agreement about using a space. And then think, and, and all of a sudden you're trying to turn something that, as I say, is private into something that will somehow attract other people to know that it's okay to walk into it. So even though there's um, posters and things around the town, I think it's difficult to, to attract and get the audience in, to get people in. Now the sound worked because it went across the, the square. But I suppose one of the, the problems doing work like that is that you're coming into an already established situation. That because I was coming in for short term, I'm not on the ground there all the time, which I realise with other projects that I would have been. So you're kind of doing background stuff of trying to engage people and trying to, 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 to get it out there. So in a way, there was a slight feeling that I was kind of coming in, doing something, going away, coming back, and it's a, you, you kind of feel a bit isolated in a situation like mm -hmm. that. And also that you're somehow coming into somewhere that isn't really your familiar space. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe you need a much longer timescale to be able to establish that people begin to recognise and get used to you and trust you. Mm -hmm. And that you can build up and get a feel of a place as well. It's difficult to say. I think it's hard, it, it's difficult for, for me to say that because on one level I would feel that maybe the audience didn't engage as much as maybe I, I would like. Yeah. But I was only there for a shortish time and part of that, because of my other work, I would have been on the ground trying to engage with people and bring them in. Mm. But I found a lot of people walk by the space. Mm being slightly nervous about coming in. Now maybe the sound piece of Rolling Thunder put them off, I don't know. But So I, I'm not quite sure, how, I think it's hard for the artist to know how much do people really engage because I wasn't hearing any gossip or I wasn't hearing someone saying, well did you notice there was a thing up the road was peculiar or not. Yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah. So because of that I it's hard for me to know exactly how many yeah. people or how much it yeah. was engaged. Yeah. One, one of the things that I got out of it, which I thought for me was a big jump, oh, yeah. was using the sound. I hadn't really had a situation of using sound like that. I'd used sound before, but in a different situation. And the other thing that I felt it really, really helped me enormously was I had ideas around doing things like taking a public space and trying to transform it into a different kind of space and into an art space or not just an art space but to alter the experience of that space and I found now having done that that I gained a lot and learned a lot from it and I found it quite exciting to do that and I hope that I could do other projects engaging with that very public kind of architectural almost relating to architecture, architectural space.